take me through what the last 48 hours or so have been like, starting from you know, leading up to trade deadline when you found out and, and how the whirlwind has gone since then? Well, the last 48 hours are hectic. <laughs> I can say that, you know, since uh, that was a game day for the Wizards. Wait, that was yesterday? No. Two days ago. Two days ago. I don't even. I think so. <laughs> oh yeah, it was two days ago. Um, I was taking a nap. <laughs> Honestly, and and the only call that goes through when I got my phone on Do Not Disturb is my wife's. So, like, she's going to pick our daughter up from preschool. I was like. 2:40, phones ring. It's like, like, why is she going? Like, as soon as like, okay, like I'm starting to process it like <laughs> as quick as I can at that moment. Just open my eyes, like, and then she's like, yeah, you got traded. I was like, where? Dallas. I was like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, because that was like that late on. You don't ever really expect that it's gonna ha anything's gonna happen since it was kind of quiet in D.C. for the last few days leading up to that. So, yeah, but definitely from. All the rumors that went out before, I'm definitely glad that this is the, the option that the chance that I get is coming here and, and play for a team that's basically top five in, in, the, in the Western Conference and fighting for a good playoff spot. So, yeah, could have been a lot worse, I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited to be here. Good to have you here. <laughs> All right. Dwayne Price, the mascot combo. Where do you see yourself fitting uh, in here, Davis? Uh, where do I see myself? Like honestly, just joining a team in midseason and the team's been doing good is just help in any way that the coaching staff sees me fit, how the teammates see me in the team, and, and that's about it. You know, I know my strengths that I'm. Like honestly, I haven't played much in the last month or so. I've had a lot of time to practice, <laughs> so I was like, I, I think the shooting is there. It's it's all good, and uh, I can definitely help guys like Luca, Jalen, Spencer with with spacing and, and and helping them offensively. And you know, they're definitely the type of players that can help me with shooting. So I think it's uh, you know we'll see how it pans out, but I feel like it is going to be a good good relation off on and off the court. Hey, Dallas, Martin Falwell of your TV play-by-play. -play. Welcome to Dallas. Uh, you just Thank mentioned you. you know working on your shooting. Uh, you know you have such a great track record of that, and I was curious if this year was it a situation were you getting shots that you're used to getting within the flow of the offense, or was there an adjustment for you this year to a new system, perhaps with a with a different coaching situation? No, I think the situation with uh, having that many guys is that were in D.C. and I would say besides the top two, three offensive options, like everybody was kind of similar level. So there wasn't like this role, like your role is bigger than somebody else's. Everybody getting, there's like three guys getting a lot of minutes and then everybody else getting limited minutes. So it, it was hard for anybody to actually get some kind of rhythm or something. And and then everybody's trying to prove themselves. So I think that was, that was part of it. And, you know, my type of game is like I really rely on my teammates setting me up. So I'm not a guy who takes the ball, creates something for myself, and, and then shoots it. So if I don't get set up by a teammate, then it's really hard for me to actually get some rhythm going and, and then getting some shots every 10, 15 minutes is, is really hard to keep that percentage up. Along those lines, uh, obviously you have a great familiarity with Luca's game and uh, certainly is somebody who is very, very good at driving and kicking and, and setting other people up. I don't know if you had a chance to watch the game the other night, but uh, you know that's obviously not the only example of, of the kind of damage that he could do. Well, I'm curious the, if you could share with you. I think, play with that. I think we've, I've experienced that damage being on the opposite side. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's definitely really hard when you, when you have to guard a player like him and you know that you need the whole team to defend him because you can't just leave him one-on-one. -on -one. And that just opens up space for everybody else. And you know, in this team, you got plenty of, especially like corner shooters that, like you know, with Dorian and uh, and Reggie Bullock. It's like those guys get open looks more often than not. So, so when you have shooters on team that get open looks, uh, it just creates like a defensive thing for the other teams. That it's hard to guard it. Like you're not gonna really leave the shooter, but it's like you can't leave Luca one on one. So, I feel like. I'm definitely going to fit in in that kind of a system. Uh, Tim McMahon with ESPN. Uh, first, are you playing tonight? Uh, tonight, no. Okay. Any idea when you will? Well, I think the goal is Tuesday in Miami. And uh, I'm 
I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is probably the first time two Latvian guys were traded for each other. Um, <laughs> probably might be the only one also in the far future if you look at it. Here, I mean, obviously, you know KP. Have, have you had conversation with him uh, since his trade went down? Uh, yeah, I've actually when it went down, like, like we texted each other immediately. It's like this is crazy. Like, especially that I think in the beginning, the details about me coming here weren't really there. So it's like for his thing, he's like, oh man, it's like thinking like we're gonna play together. It's like another Latvian guy on the team. It's like, but then it's like after that, like all that comes out is like we're uh, basically traded for each other. Uh, you know, we just talked and it's like, well, you need basically. If you need help with anything, if you want to know anything about either the team, the staff, or anything, or, or around the city, you just I think it makes it easy the moving part from one place to another. When you can just ask a guy, it's like, how's this? How's that? Like, I don't know where should I live? What's a better neighborhood? Or, you know, the how's the team medical staff? How's the teammates? Everything? How's in the locker room? And uh, that's definitely helpful. All right, we're we'll gonna have to zoom real quick. Landon, go ahead. Hey, Davis, welcome um, um, to Dallas, um, MassFansForLife.com. Um, what stands out to you the most um, in the city of Dallas as you move here and make it your new home? Well, that's a good question. Uh, what stands out? I would say, like, as for me as, you know, playing the NBA, the, the biggest thing is probably having, well, the arena and I guess the new practice facility right around the corner. It's a lot easier to figure out where to live because <laughs> you try to be close to one place. Now, uh, you know, the difference of like I was in San Antonio or DC is like the practice facility is one side of the city and the arena is downtown and it's like it's a mess trying to figure out where you want to live, what's the closest to both places. So that's definitely the easier part. And, uh, you know, all the restaurants here downtown is like the times that we spend here playing on the road is. Good food, so that's I guess those two most important things to me moving here. <laughs> and then we've got one from Hoop District in DC. Hey, that was Neil Law, Hoop District. First of all, you know, best of luck for you and your family going forward in Dallas. Thank you. I'm just curious for you. You know, you guys started off really hot in DC. What do you think ultimately kind of led to things not going necessarily the way more recently? I think that's the thing about what I mentioned about the the shooting and everything. For me personally, you know, the the rotations of players, multiple players getting limited minutes, it's tough to have team chemistry when every single day the team is basically fighting with each other about I want I want to get more minutes and uh, I want a bigger role. Like like that was probably the biggest part of struggles for most guys during the season. And you know that kind of early on that doesn't show up. Because while everybody's trying to figure out what's going on, but and and other teams really figuring that out, it just once you start going downhill, it's really hard to turn around and and start going up again. Cool. Thank